We're naming the company Strata. Strata, Strata, Strata. Do I like the name? Not really. But I don't really have a lot of choices for what to call this thing. You'd think that starting a business and picking a name would be the easy part. But as it turns out, when it comes to naming, we don't have as much control as we thought. So we're going with Strata, a name I, I really don't love all that much. So how did I get here? Well, coming up with a name feels like it would be an exciting creative debate. Sure, we had some fun brainstorming names. We made a list of options. We challenged them. We challenged each other. We examined how different names made us feel and ultimately tried to decide what seemed to be a good creative fit. But the truth is, picking a name is not always about being creative. You have to find the name, know that it's good for you, but don't buy it so that you can then run a trademark check to determine can you actually use it. So it's like you can't send a bunch of names to a lawyer because you can only send one. Without a name, we can't buy a web domain. Without the web domain, we can't build the website. Without securing a website, we can't do a trademark search. Without a successful trademark search, we can't register the name. Without being able to register, we can't incorporate the company. Without incorporating the company, we can't open a bank account. Without the bank account, we can't deposit funds, set up payroll, email, or Slack. Without Slack and email, we can't communicate effectively. And without being able to communicate effectively, all we could do is huddle around a dining room table and dream about a company we can't start, which is exactly what we do, a lot. So this name issue is literally holding up everything. And obviously the name has to fit the business, but we're still orienting ourselves around what this business is. We know we're going to try to build an AI powered workflow cloud platform. That mouthful is still a little foggy. And then there's the type of name we want. We really want a short name, one or two syllables, and we want it to roll off the tongue. So after building a strong list of candidates, we've settled on Switch AI. So we go to the domain registrar, GoDaddy, type it in and 409, what? Okay, okay, uh, too ambitious. So much for the primary name. We'll settle on switchflows.com. I know it's kind of lame, but we'll try it out. Nope. Switchboard.io, Snapflow, Switch Slide, Switch Side, Underflow, Surge, New, the German spelling, Ventura, Rhythm, Funnel. Well, what's happening here is a very straightforward but depressing equation that we can plot on a map. This is how websites work. The x-axis is the name of the URL measured from complex names to simple ones. The y-axis is the cost of the URL measured from dirt cheap to a crime. This breaks down into four categories. Ideally, you want an easy to remember website that uses a simple name, which you can't afford. This leads you to simple names that are easy to remember and affordable, which you can't have. So you explore not so simple names that are readily available, which you don't want, leaving undesirable overpriced names that no one wants, which makes zero sense. We could have bought beds.com for three and a half million dollars or AISurgeries.com for a million seven. So as we continue to search, at first glance, it seems as though the names we desired were already taken. But when we double check the URLs, we realize they may not be taken. In many cases, the URLs are actually held by another registrar. But we'll look at that. We can hire GoDaddy to broker a deal for us at the low, low price of $69.99. All right, let's try that. And $69.99 later, we learned what we already knew. Switchboard.io is not available. But, well, the domain owner would consider selling us that URL for somewhere around $50,000. Hard no. But the broker also told us that there are other options available with alternative domain extensions. Okay, well, what's that about? Well, we're all familiar with common domain extensions, .com, .net, .org, .edu. But there's also new domains like .fit, .club, .art, and .space. There's even an extension for .sucks. Yes, Finally, .sucks is an available domain extension. In fact, I was so frustrated in this, I tried to register godaddy.sucks, but it's unavailable, which means one of you has it. So find me, I'm a buyer. So changing the extension is one trick. Oh, by the way, if you want, feel free to register your least favorite person's name .sucks. We know it'll be cheap, and then share that URL with your friends. Probably also run that by your therapist. Another trick is to take a word or name you like and intentionally misspell it. As someone who misspells a lot of words, this feels a little weird. For example, 
We know purple.com is taken, but we can drop a couple of unnecessary letters and now purple.com is purple. So now the domain's available to us, but we can't afford it. So we can now try to combine some of these tricks together. For example, if we use a newer or less popular extension, we see, ooh, purple.fit, five bucks. So this dumpster fire goes on for days and we're feeling totally demoralized because we can't start a business without a name and we're not even getting that right. Then we tried Strata. It was actually Pete's idea. Strata is Italian for street. And you know, it got me thinking, have you ever seen a workflow diagram that someone builds for a production? Have you ever noticed that sometimes they look like a map designed by a nine-year-old? Creatives often build workflows like following a map from a source to a destination. And we're not only super passionate about workflow, we believe we can forever change it by using AI to help simplify it. So we started to feel that calling our company Street in Italian fits our vision for building a cloud-based end-to-end workflow platform. The name is short, it's two syllables, and doesn't appear to require us to intentionally misspell it. So can we make it work? Well, strata.io.com and .app are all available for a round, ugh, 60 grand. But then after looking at alternative extensions, there's one called .tech, $200, huh. So now we have a name we can get behind at a price we can actually afford. It ties into our brand. It gives us a free nod to our Italian roots and our trademark attorney can finally check on our availability to protect it. And you know what? A couple of days later, he came back with confirmation that we should be able to make strata.tech actually work. So after days of trying to get ahead of this, we go back to our friends at GoDaddy with the intention of buying strata.tech. I sit down, I see the URL is available, I set up the cameras to record the monumental moment when we buy the domain and... Wait, wait, what's happening? Something's not right. Why did that change? Yeah, it's same domain taken now. So what's happening here is that domain registrars are constantly scraping the internet up to capture new URLs and sell them back to buyers. It's a business, but another thing that can happen is that by typing in the same name and doing frequent searches, we notice URLs that were once available suddenly and mysteriously become unavailable. That happening once seems possible. Maybe some random person had the same idea as us. That happening twice seems unlikely. But time after time, we noticed a pattern. Suspiciously, some of these URLs can potentially be retrieved through paying a brokerage fee. And we didn't know it at the time, but what is happening is called domain front running. Now it's important to note, GoDaddy claims they don't do domain front running. However, what happened here was our experience. All that work, creative brainstorming, researching, having paid brokerage fees, as well as our trademark attorney, and we just lost the URL. But Pete was able to use an alternative search and track down the same URL to a different owner, which appears to be the actual owner. So it seems as though GoDaddy doesn't even own the URL that they've listed as available. They were representing it from another owner and upon payment would transfer it to us. But our frequent searches were driving up its value, which apparently triggered GoDaddy to revoke a direct buy, even though it was available literally moments ago. But luckily Pete grabbed it for the original price and we were able to take the name. Okay, well it's purchased. I even got a follow-up email five days later from a GoDaddy broker who asked if I needed assistance in buying the strata.tech domain. And I know they're trying to be helpful, but we already own it. So what did we learn here? First, it's important to resist frequent searches of a domain name with registrars, or they can take your name, jack up the price, and lure you to pay extra fees in order to get what you want. It happened to us literally while the cameras were rolling. Second, and this is the most important lesson we learned, don't hold on to things that don't matter. Now you're probably saying, wait, it's your name. A name matters, Michael. I know that. But I also know the nuance of naming a business is different from person to person. And as a creative, it's really easy for me to become obsessive about details that I may overinflate. Only a few weeks ago, to think that I could accept a name that was merely satisfactory would feel like a total miss. But then I remembered something said on entrepreneur Alex Bloomberg's sensational podcast, Startup, involving the challenges with naming his business, Gimlet Media. It pointed out that a name is somewhat of an empty vessel. It's the job of the people behind it to fill that vessel in order to make it valuable or memorable. That doesn't mean we were gonna allow ourselves to pick a stupid name. But I surprised myself when I was reminded that starting a business means constantly having to make compromises. 
to pick our battles. And I eventually realized that fighting tooth and nail for the perfect name wasn't worth the money or the time or the calorie burn. Not to mention a day after landing the perfect name, I just doubt my decision anyway. If the Strata product sucks, then it won't matter what the name is or what it costs to own the URL. Is Strata a great name? Nah, it's okay. But I realize it's not up to us to create a great name. It's up to us to pick a good name and create a great product. So here's to Strata. Now that it's ours, it's time that we learn how to take our idea and turn it into a compelling story. Storytelling. I've told a lot of stories. I know how to write a story and I know how to pitch a script. But how exactly do you pitch a company?